Interest in what caused last year's explosion of the Nord Stream pipelines has been sparked this week with an investigative journalist claiming that the Biden administration has ordered the attacks. The White House strongly denounced any notion that it was involved, but comments President Biden made a year ago do little to dispel that notion. Let's watch. If Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. Over the weekend, journalist Seymour Hirsch, who first reported on the possible sabotage, doubled down on his allegation and told RT World News that story confirming the CIA is behind the blast wasn't hard to find. Journalist Glenn Greenwald also called out the administration and its allies in the West for propagating the narrative that Russia was responsible, tweeting, though the West security state knows they can get the corporate media to say anything they tell them to say, even they must sometimes marvel at how easy it is. I bet anything they cackle as they recall, can you believe we got them to say Russia blew up its own pipeline? Mm. No. So, so the, yeah. the statements by Biden and another uh, government official, uh, Victoria Newland, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, that indicating that America would do something mm -hmm. to sabotage and stop Nord Stream is, I, I think, what makes it very hard to dismiss mm -hmm. the claim that in Seymour Hersh's reporting that it was the U.S. Um, Karine Jean-Pierre said Biden is the best communicator we have. He just tells it like it is. Now, I know that's not actually true and that Biden sometimes gets his words confused, so I'm not actually clear on what he meant when he said that. Uh, if it was a threat that we were going to blow it up, then yes. I, so I, I don't I, I, I think it is perfectly plausible that it was U.S. action. And, and I'm. I'm very upset by that. So I, Mike Lee, I think, had a good statement on this the other day. Senator Mike Lee, Republican senator, mm -hmm. said, I'm troubled that I can't immediately rule out the suggestion that the U.S. blew up Nord Stream. I checked with a bunch of Senate colleagues. Among those I've asked, none were ever briefed on this. If it turns out to be true, we've got a huge problem. And, and that's the approach I agree with here. It, it was, if it was the U.S., it was totally, totally wrong, insane and scandalous and, I would hope, illegal and unconstitutional for them to do this without any congressional o oversight whatsoever. Uh, now, that said, I cannot just wholly accept this report from Seymour Hersh released on Substack based on what sounds like a single anonymous source with no additional documentation or verification that was, I, I don't know that this story was edited or checked by anyone else. Like I can't, that's not, that can never be the last word for me on the subject. I'm sorry. Just sure, can't. but we're, we're kind of jumping from the first suspicion to the last word here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the part of the problem is that the journalists, the, the institution of journalism seemed to have very little interest in investigating what was a very likely implausible cause of the explosion. Not that they, you know, didn't, you know, neglected to discover the, the, the core truth here or that they maybe didn't find the same source that Seymour Hirsch found or all anything like that. But the, the argument that Hirsch is making in the RT piece is that this wasn't a difficult story to find. If anybody wanted to find this story, they could have. But how often have you heard journalists asking Queen Jean-Pierre or any of the White House press secretaries about accusations that the U.S. blew up the pipeline? and asked a series of follow-up questions about that uh, about the circumstances of the explosion that, frankly, point to U.S. involvement, including the training exercises that were happening nearby, including the statements that were made by Joe Biden that we ha just heard. Little to none. I, I don't remember any questions. Maybe some questions were asked. But obviously, we've seen back and forth about the word woke and every other kind of thing, and the same energy has not been brought to that. How often, how quickly, this is, and this is Glenn Greenwald's point, how quickly did the mainstream media pick up the narrative that absolutely Russia did it? If they had brought the same skepti skepticism and, and mm -hmm. patience that you're bringing to the idea that maybe American did it, to the idea that Russia did it, I think we would have had a m much more robust conversation. But instead, there seemed to be a glomming on to what may be State Department talking points that are very convenient. Republicans are, are having these hearings, now that they're in control of the House, on the Twitter files, uh, Hunter Biden's laptop, all of these kinds of things. Great. 
perhaps there's also an interest in investigating whether or not the CIA blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. That's something there's, I think that's also Well, 100%. Relevant. There absolutely should be. Honestly, it would not surprise me if there is more appetite for investigating that kind of thing among Republicans I'm than sure, among Democrats. I'm sure that's true, but are they going to do it? Indictment. it no, is there enough, enough to do it? They should do it. For sure they should do it. Uh, and, and it is telling that the kind of reporting that Seymour Hersh is doing used to, uh, that, that calls into question dominant um, uh, narratives about American power and how American military might is used. Those used to be questions that you asked from within inside the New York Times or mm -hmm. from within inside the Washington Post. He was a journalist who was affiliated with, I believe, the New York Times yeah, and, and has written pieces for other prestigious mm -hmm. um, uh, mainstream liberal progressive outlets. Mm -hmm. Now he has to operate outside that system mm -hmm. because that system is very captured, I'm sorry to say, by State Department, FBI, CIA in interests, people formally representing those interests, you know, the, re the revolving door between the deep state and the news media is alarming. The progressive news media, the yeah. mainstream news media yeah. is alarming. So you can't, so I absolutely understand why people can't trust them to tell those stories. I think it's shocking and outrageous and sad that you don't have you know, reporters at those institutions demanding answers yeah. from government officials on who actually blew up Nord Stream. What evidence is there? Um, yeah, like, I, I understand not wanting to accept, of course, Seymour Hersh is, uh, you know, undisclosed source, anonymous source, uncritically. Don't accept mm -hmm. anything in the world uncritically. We all have to use our, our, mm -hmm. our analytical faculties everywhere. However, it seems like a lot of corporate journalists are happy to accept an unnamed source or a named State Department Absolutely. source when it's they someone. They love unnamed sources. When, when, when it, especially when it's someone saying, oh, the Hunter Biden laptop is probably a fake. Yeah. You know, like though, there was no. Or was someone bad mouthing was, Trump in his, sure, you know. There's no skepticism about any of that. P tape, oh, unnamed, yeah. unnamed, unnamed source. None of this, none of this criticism of unnamed sources except when it points in the direction of bad behavior by the American government. Public editors, uh, someone is the public editor of the Washington Post or the New York Times, and she's jumped a couple times, I can't think of who I'm talking about, has done good writing on how the standards for whether you would accept mm. reporting from an unnamed source has have just totally collapsed, or actually collapsed during the Trump years, mm -hmm. because there were so many people who, want, you know, who worked in the Trump administration who wanted to gossip about how zany Trump is sure. and be quoted anonymously, and, and reporters realized that was catnip for their you know, resistance-loving mm -hmm. audiences. They just wanted to hear people in, you know, the whole, I am part of the resistance inside sure. the Trump administration, that whole kind of thing. They just took that ball and ran with it. it, it really, again, harming and degrading stand, uh, these standards. Yeah. Like, if you have something, because everyone will like, will like complain about their boss or their workplace, sure. like, you know, off the record quietly. You're not gonna you know, say exactly who this is, right? So that's not, that's not really news or novel, and, and it, sure. it's very much got abused. And, and if anything, <laughs> the idea that Seymour Hersh knows someone in the CIA who was privy to what the CIA was doing, mm -hmm. that positioning certainly is, is understandable why that person doesn't want to be named. That is a career-ending move. Sure. They are, I'm sure, they have security clearance and all these other kind of things that would really cause them to potentially have violated laws in talking to this reporter. Like, that is... That is, I mean, there's a rationale there that's very understandable for why that source in particular is unnamed. Also, you're going to continue to get information from the source. I mean, that that is a much more understandable yeah. choice than as you're talking about these kind of gossipy inside the Trump White House story. Which I get, but I don't understand. You know, this was just released on his Substack, so I don't I, I don't know what the process here did. An editor vet it. You know, I, I might have I might do a story, not not one of, usually of this. <laughs> you know, global significance, but uh, I might have a source that I'm quoting anonymously, but at least I'm, I'm going to tell, you know, an editor, well, this is who it is. It's well, not going is... in the story, but so they can say, oh, that sounds good. And they can say, wait, wait a minute, who? So, and there's, there's also no, or I'm looking for documentation. I want, you know, right. I, mean, it's, I want it's emails from. We've talked about this with the Twitter files. There have been people who yeah. are skeptical of that reporting because the journalists involved are largely independent, unaffiliated with any mainstream yeah you know, official media But they've got screenshots of emails. They have documents they're releasing. So I don't have to... I mean, I mean you're, you've I, raised valid but questions I'm not, about I'm not, it. I'm not I, criticizing Twitter. I'm just saying that there are people who raise the same concerns. Like, yeah. what happens when you don't have editorial standards? Yeah. Glenn Greenwald has been accused... So many people have been accused yeah. of this. And, you know... I, I don't know. I'm not saying that. I think that there are reasons that journalists, journalistic institutions have set themselves up the way they are. I think that certain kind of guardrails are yeah. important and good for 
journalists to have. At the same time, I also am not willing to write off the Twitter files reporting or write yeah. off Glenn Greenwald, write off Matt Taibbi or anybody else simply because they're not it's gone. But, but in I those think what well, same. Obviously, I, I love yeah. what they're doing for the Twitter files, but they're providing documents, and I think that is a, a very key difference. I can actually see so I can see emails yeah. that I can read for myself well, yes, that are clearly. But also, yes, and I mean there's the documents, which I think why I have. Yeah repeatedly said that there's so much value to the Twitter files reporting. And there's also the kinds of claims and narrative structuring that has not been really close, you know, closely mm -hmm. tied to documentary evidence. Like the overwhelming thrust of the disclosures is that the, there is a left, a right, an anti, sure. an anti-right bias, which is only provable if you have the totality of the documents or at least more than we've been exposed to, as evidenced by some of the um, some of what came out with the Chrissy Teigen of it all in the in the hearings last week. So yeah, yes and no. I'm saying I, I understand your skeptical skepticism and hesitation to really jump fully into the Seymour Hersh's explanation. But the real question is, why don't we have more than Seymour Hersh who are asking these kinds of Absolutely. hard questions? Absolutely, people should get on it. <laughs> we will have more rising right after this. Stay with us.